space is vast, like really vast, like trust me bro. So humanity and I'm guessing practically most species aside from the orcs and the Eldar who were created by the old ones, all other Xenos and humans probably started traveling between stars using massive colony ships, outfitted with probably advanced rockets or parasails. But to maintain and sustain a growing stellar region or an empire, all of them needed to develop ways to travel faster than light or to get from one star system to another in a matter of days or weeks or at the very least months or a few years. And so Warhammer 40k's Grim Dark Galaxy has quite a few ingenious concepts of FTL travel utilized differently by different races and species. And thus here in this video, we will showcase all the ways the major factions go about from star to star. Well, except for Chaos, who basically just opens a warp portal and boobity boobity bop, sorcery. So let's get to the others. The first one, Humanity. So in the very beginning, as we said earlier, humans colonized the galaxy using sublight spaceships and took them thousands of years to create a burgeoning empire or at least a confederacy of planets. But during the dark age of technology, warp drives were created and this ushered in a new age of expansion for the human race. Warp drives integrated into void crafts enabled the ships to travel faster than light by entering a chaotic dimension known as the warp or the immaterium, where time doesn't really flow quite right and a few theories suggest that time doesn't really exist there. This allows the void ships to bypass vast distances in real space, making interstellar journeys feasible within a short time. These devices present on the large void ships facilitate warp jumps, but the perilous nature of the warp introduces significant dangers during that travel, which includes demons and warp entities entering the ships and killing everyone on board. And this does lead to the development of galar fields that shield the ship like a bubble around it, shielding it from the dangers of the immaterium. But to get from one place to another, in an expected time frame, a new type of human was needed. The individuals responsible for navigating through the warp were known as the navigators and they are psychers. Navigators evolved around the same time the warp engines were created and are often mutated individuals with a third eye, a psychic organ that allows them to perceive the currents of the warp and guide ships through the tumultuous seas. The navigator's psychic abilities are crucial for avoiding dangers and reaching the intended destination, uh, space and time. And to properly navigate the tumultuous sea of souls, a beacon like a lighthouse was created by the Emperor and this was called the Astronomicon and it is the psychic beacon that paves the way for human ships and maybe even orcs too to get from one place to another. The beacon is generated by a choir of psychers who burn their souls away every day to guide interstellar travelers. Otherwise, there are also ships that travel sublight speeds with a 4 to 7G continuous acceleration that pushes the speed to more than half or to three-fourths the speed of light or 0.7C. And that is how humans travel in the grim dark. The second race, the Orcs. So the Greenskins employ a peculiar and erratic form of faster than light travel known as the warp engine. And they use the same thing, warp jumps. But warp engines among the Orcs are often coupled together by the Megboys, who repurpose salvage Imperial warp drives with a distinct Orcish flair. The result is a patchwork of reassembled components reflecting the Orcs' penchant for resourcefulness on the battlefield. In a bizarre twist, some warp engines take on an even more unconventional form by incorporating the brains of the weird boys, adding an extra layer of chaotic unpredictability to their functionality. What sets Orc technology apart though is the seemingly impossible defiance of rail space physics. No matter how outlandish or crazy these contraptions appear, they operate with a bizarre efficiency that challenges the understanding of conventional races within the galaxy. The underlying force driving these warp engines is believed to be the gestalt psychic powers inherent in the green skin species as a whole. The collective psychic energy infuses their creations, allowing them to transgress the known laws of physics and navigate the perilous currents of the immaterium easily. Number 3. The Tau The Tau, known for their rapid technological advancements, employ two distinct methods for interstellar travel. Firstly, they utilize the ether drive, also known as the gravity drive, which enables faster than light travel by briefly diving into warp space. Unlike the imperial warp drive, the ether drive achieves superluminal velocities but at a slower pace. Despite the Tau lacking psychers and their ignorance of the true nature of the warp, the Earth cars has developed an effective drive system to calculate trajectories and jump points. They also developed the slipstream nodule, 
which unwillingly serves the, as the Tau equivalent of the warp drive distinct from a Geller field. Its purpose is to breach the boundary between rail space and the warp by utilizing antimatter, allowing Tau ships to navigate the deeper causeways of the Immaterium. Secondly, the Tau, as of the current setting, have developed and most are using what is known as a ZFR Horizon Accelerator Engine, colloquially known as the ZFR Drive, representing a groundbreaking invention of the Tau Earth cores, which are their scientists and researchers. This propulsion system, pivotal during the second sphere of expansion, allows the Tau starships to approach near light speeds. This innovative technology enables rapid interstellar travel, facilitating the Tau Empire's expansion to new star systems within objective Terran years and with minimal subjective time passage for the crews due to their relativistic effects. If you don't know what that means, ask an Einstein. The ZFR drive stands as a testament to the Tau engineering prowess and their commitment to progress in the vast expanse of the grim dark galaxy. Whether they use antimatter or dark matter for fueling this engine is up to debate, but it works and yeah, it still makes them slow to respond to crisis in fringe areas of their small empire but they, but they do travel at near light speeds. Number 4. The Tyranids Tyranids traverse interstellar space using a unique form of faster than light travel facilitated by a specialized bioship known as the Narval. Unlike Imperial starships that navigate the warp, Tyranid high fleets employ a distinct method that involves bending space-time between the origin and destination star systems. The Narval, a near defenseless bioship with minimal weaponry and protective features, relies on an array of monofilament spines on its bow for sensory input, including gravimetric and electromagnetic signals. Using these signals, the Narval detects new planetary systems at extreme interstellar distances. Subsequently, it manipulates the gravity of the origin star system to create a compressed space-time transit corridor, like an Alcubierre drive, allowing the fleet including itself to traverse vast interstellar distances. This space warping travel is sensitive to strong gravitational sources though, and as a result, Trinidad high fleets must resort to more conventional biologically induced reaction-based propulsion when approaching a new star system, although this method may slow their arrival by Terran years or solar decades. But it is more reliable than warp drives. Number 5. Eldari The Eldar mostly reside in vast starships called the Craft Worlds, and these continental-sized constructions traverse through space in sublight speeds. The reason they do this is because of a chaos god of their own creation called Slanesh. But to travel faster than light, the Eldari, including the Drukhari or the Dark Eldar, utilize the webway. Hell, the Dark Eldar even made it their home in the form of a city called Komora. This is a region of subspace that pierces into the warp like a vast intertwined network of tunnels shielded from the Immaterium. This was created by the Old Ones who were basically gods and gifted the Eldar with the know-how to traverse it. They can just pop in and out faster than any of the other life forms or any other form of travel and that is why the Emperor of Mankind also was heavily invested in his own webway project which might have given humanity access to it as well. So anyway, the Eldar primarily rely on the webway for galactic travel using ships without warp drives. But in emergencies, they can also traverse the warp with their infinity circuit acting as a Gela field, as noted in the Battlefield Gothic rulebooks and in Jane Zar, The Storm of Silence. However, the Eldar avoid warp travel due to the risk of demonic attacks and attracting Slanesh. Also, craft worlds being too large for most webway poles cannot easily dip into the webway for rapid responses to threats. So these ships remain in rail space, traveling at near light speed. Number 6. The Necrons the Necrons are the oldest and most advanced race in the galaxy and they do not have souls anymore, so the warp is out of their possibilities. They thus have created a hyper-advanced propulsion engine which actually makes use of no movement whatsoever. Yeah, this is called the Inertia-less Drive. It is a mysterious and enigmatic propulsion system exclusive to the Necron race. It defies conventional physics by enabling Voidcraft to move through space without inertia surpassing the speed of light in a vacuum without entering the Immaterium as well. Upon activation, it releases a flare of relativistic energy, and this technology extends beyond void travel, allowing Necron vehicles to execute short-range jumps on planetary battlefields. In addition to the inertialess drive, the Necrons possess alternative FTL technologies as well, such as long-range teleportation and the use of dolmen gates to access the webway, which are all operating outside the confines of the Immaterium. 
the inner workings of these technologies remain shrouded in mystery to the Imperial scientists. The Necrons also possess an arcane technology called an Eternity Gate, also known as a Dark Portal, capable of opening a dark interdimensional portal using black holes and wormholes to transport Necron troops to the battlefield from elsewhere in the galaxy in an instant. So that's how OP the Necrons are, even in their form of teleportation and interdimensional transportation, which is incomprehensible. And number 7, the Leagues of Votan. The Leagues of Votan kin employ cutting edge warp drive technology, boasting superior design and reliability compared to humanity's understanding. At the heart of their void ships are advanced Gela ramparts and warp drives. Each kin void master is assisted by a specialized self aware iron kin wayfinder. These robotic entities possess accelerated logic cores, enabling them to navigate the treacherous immaterium without risking the biological kin. The kin's warp travel involves a unique approach known as plungers. These controlled short warp jumps allow the kin to meticulously navigate through the dangers of the immaterium. During these plungers, the wayfinders supported by their bridge crews strategically harvest energistic skeins from the immaterium and may even board warp-borne space hulks for empiric salvage. While the kin's method takes longer than the vast warp jumps undertaken by human void ships or the risky sprints of the Tau slipstream module, it ensures a remarkably precise arrival at the intended destination. So those are the 7 ways of faster than light travel in Warhammer 40k. So if you like this video then check this other one as well. And if you wanna browse for other content then check out our channel. So subscribe and like for support. And yeah, while you're at it, bang on that bell icon as well for notifications on new video uploads. Till the next time, take care boys.